What time were you born? The time with a rotating disc with holes in it to scan the scene and generate the video signal. Or the time radio was the main television set for us. Or were you there the time we used to huddle around flickering black and white screens, squinting through static just to catch a glimpse of a broadcast? This isn't just the ending, the television set has evolved into the modern set we know today. Colored, lean as glass, YouTube or Netflix can be streamed, can browse the web, and now you can cast your phone on the television screen. How did we go from wobbly antennas and tiny screens to streaming shows while sitting in traffic? Welcome to the wild, weird, and wonderful ride through the history of television. Because this story is anything but boring. Just as we learn about the generation of computers. The same goes for the TV. It can be easy to forget television wasn't always so technically advanced and popular. It started off as a fuzzy, flickering blob. The earliest iterations were small, but bulky, a world away from today's ultra-thin screens. Yet they were the first step in a continuing journey of development. First, engineers and scientists had to discover how to produce moving images at all. The first photograph wasn't invented until 1822. and. As with most technological discoveries, several unconnected people were working on this problem at once, yet they all ultimately converged on the technology that we know today as television. In 1884, a German inventor named Paul Nipko came up with a crazy contraption called the Nipko disc. That is like a spinning disc with holes that somehow managed to scan images line by line. This television used rotating metal discs to convert moving images to electrical impulses, which were then sent via cable to a screen. The result was a low-resolution pattern of light and dark, which nevertheless traveled a considerable distance. In 1928, Baird transmitted a signal between London and New York. You could see it as the first mechanical TV. Sure, when I mentioned it at the beginning of the video, everyone was wondering what kind of TV is that? But actually, it was the first TV ever made. The mechanical TV. It was a really cool idea, but it wasn't exactly Netflix and chill material just yet. Now in the 1920s and 30s, Scottish engineer John Logie Baird finally cracked the code and demonstrated the first true television in 1926. The images were black and white, and to be honest, they were kind of blob-like. But hey, people were impressed. It was like the first moon landing of its time, except, you know, with more static. With that, a foundation was laid. It was realized that TV on air is possible. By the 1940s and 50s, TV started to get its act together. World War II had slowed things down, but afterward, the television boom was on. Families crowded around their TVs like they were looking into the future. And in a way, they were. This era gave birth to the golden age of television. TV sets were still the size of a small refrigerator, and if you were lucky, you had two channels. Changing the channel meant twisting a dial. No remotes. People actually had to get off the couch. By the 1960s, things were getting colorful. Literally. In 1966, full-color broadcasts hit the airwaves. Shows like Star Trek and Batman made us feel like we were living in the future, even though we were still tuning our antennas like we were trying to contact aliens. The technology for color TV was discussed as early as 1904, but it was Baird's 1928 mechanical TV design that clearly proposed a system with three primary colors of light, red, green, and blue. Adoption by the general public was much slower. Color television wasn't widespread for another decade, and many families still owned a black and white set into the 1970s and beyond. If you've ever had to adjust a rabbit ear antenna, you know the struggle was real. But the 70s and 80s brought some relief. The remote control was finally brought. Humanity could flip channels without lifting a finger, but technically just one finger. It was a game changer. More channels, more shows, more everything. The 80s also saw the birth of cable TV. Suddenly, you could get channels dedicated to just cartoons, just sports, or even just music videos. This was the MTV era, back when the M still stood for music. Cable opened up a whole new world, and TV was no longer limited to whatever the local station wanted to show you. Due to the high prices of early television sets, every family simply couldn't replace their old set in lockstep with each technology development. As long as the in-color broadcast also played in black and white, there was no big incentive to upgrade until it became the cultural norm. But following World War II, manufacturing advancements used for military efforts were adopted by commercial companies. It became much cheaper to produce televisions, which made them more accessible to the general public. The 2000s brought flat-screen TVs. Suddenly, we didn't need massive TV cabinets anymore. And the picture quality? Crystal clear. For decades, television broadcasts were required to use analog signals, which means signals that could be distributed via cable, airwaves, or satellite. 
These images were often poor quality and vulnerable to distortion and static, which became increasingly evident as television sets grew larger. But things changed when everything turned from analog to digital. A sharper quality image and reduced frequency requirements. Once the transition period ended, older analog TV sets were unable to access broadcast signals without a special converter. The analog broadcast systems were sold to wireless networks. As technology got smarter, so did TV. High definition, plasma, LCD, OLED, if you didn't know what kind of TV you had, you were probably doing it wrong. And if you still had a tube TV, well, it was time to upgrade. With the growing of the internet, streaming services began to humble DVD rental company, revolutionizing the way we consume TV. Suddenly, people were creating and uploading video content to the internet. But at the time, they couldn't watch the content on their television unless they connected the two manually via cables. This was also around the time Netflix switched from being a DVD rental company to streaming its video library digitally, eventually producing its own original content. Still, viewers could only watch this content on their computers, since it wasn't possible to access it on a standard television. So to address this, the newest iteration of televisions received smart capabilities which allow them to connect to the internet and access video material via streaming. No more waiting for your favorite show to air once a week. Now, you could watch an entire season, heck, an entire series, in one weekend. From Netflix and Hulu to Disney+, Plus, streaming has changed the game. You can watch on your phone, your tablet, even your refrigerator if it's fancy enough. So what's next for TV? 3D? Fully immersive virtual reality? Maybe we'll all just plug into some futuristic TV universe one day. Whatever happens, one thing is clear. Television is here to stay, always in everyone's house. From a spinning disc to binge-watching cat videos, the history of television has been anything but boring. And honestly, we can't wait to see what happens next. Please like and subscribe if you benefited from the video. Also hoping to see you next time.